Good morning. Welcome back to study MA4A32 on microprocessor system. Today we are going to study lecture six, which is about the data processing in ARM. This will be the last lecture from part one of uh, this course. Subsequently, Prof. John Han will teach you part two. Before we enter the study of uh, today's topics, let's have a quick review about the answer to these uh, four important uh, questions. Question number one, what is the motivation for you to study this course? Question number two, what is the learning objective of this course? Question number three, what is the content that you are going to study from this course? And the question number four, what is the methodology for you to follow in order to apply learned knowledge and the skill? The answer to question number one is shown by this slide. So basically, if in future, you will be in charge of uh, designing smart system or smart product in which microcontroller will be involved to serve as a controller of a closed loop control system or device for controlling data input and the output in the network. Then in this case, you have to study this course because this course will enable you to become designer of a smart control system or designer of a smart communication system. And this slide basically show you two examples of a smart product or smart system in which you can make use of a microcontroller to achieve feedback control or data communication. The second question is about the learning objective of this course. So this course will enable you to become a user of a microprocessor system or user of a microcontroller. Therefore, as a user, you must know your problem to be solved. You must know the solution or algorithm which will solve your problem. Then your task or job is to implement your algorithm or solution onto the microprocessor system or microcontroller. So as a user, you do not need to know the exact detail of the hardware aspect of a microcontroller or microprocessor system, but you just need to know how to appreciate the performance and the property of the hardware that you are going to use. It is like when you purchase a new car, you must appreciate the hardware aspect of your new car before you enjoy the driving of your new car. So it is a similar situation. First, you must appreciate the hardware aspect of a microcontroller or microprocessor system before you are going to implement your algorithm or solution onto the hardware. Question number three is about the content of this course. This course consists of two parts. The first part is about the programming of a microcontroller or microprocessor system. And the second part is about the interfacing to input device and the output device. I will teach you the first part and the Prof. John Han will teach you the second part. Today, we are going to finish the lecture six of uh, the first part. So after today's lecture, 
Prof. John Han will take over and uh, you will study the second part of uh, this course. For question number four, what is the methodology for you to follow in order to apply, learn the knowledge and the skill to implement your solution? So this slide basically highlight to you the methodology. The methodology is quite simple. So basically you just need to know how to make use of a relevant register in order to configure the hardware, in order to monitor the hardware, in order to read and write data from or to register. So therefore, the focus is on the understanding of the property and the usage of a register. In terms of a skill, you just need to know how to make use of one of these three instructions in order to write the value to register and the read value from register. Now we move on to study today's lecture, which is the lecture six of part one. And uh, today we are going to study the basic instruction which enable you to undertake arithmetic operation as well as logic operation. In addition, we are going to understand the concept of uh, conditional computation, how to control conditional computation and also how to control computational flow. Before we look at the, the basic instruction for arithmetic operation and the logic operation, we must know the status of a computational result and the call for condition because we can undertake a conditional computation. This is why we need to know what will be the condition, how to produce the condition, and uh, how to use condition to control computation. First, we just have a quick overview about the computation in mathematics in general. We could undertake arithmetic computation and uh, logic computation. For example, we can do addition this is addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, or combination of them. Another good news is about the use of a Tyler series, which will enable you to undertake a computation with any function by combining addition, multiplication, subtraction, and the division through the use of these four basic computation, you are able to achieve the computation with any function. So that is a magic result. In terms of a logic operation, the typical operator are an operator, or operator, exclusive or operator. You can combine this operator in order to achieve a complex logic operation. Then here you need to know for each of a computation, you will obtain a result. And that the result could be equal to zero, greater than zero, or smaller than zero. Or the result could be zero, positive, negative or the result could be zero, one, okay? So the hardware will tell you this condition of a result or status of a result. Then you can make use of the status of a computational result or condition of a computational result to make a decision or to control the flow of a computation. Like give you 
a flexibility or advantage. This is why you need to pay attention to status of a computational result or the use of a condition. Okay, so this is some extra knowledge for you to learn. So in any digital computer, there will be at least one status register. This means the current program status register. From this register, you will be able to know the status of a computational result or com condition of a computation. Okay, here you just need to pay attention to these four status. First one is quite easier to know. Like negative means n means negative, z means zero, c means there's a carry bit. Okay, v means overflow. When there's a carry bit, that means uh, there's an overflow. La, okay, and uh, here you need to know that uh, the designer of uh, hardware make use of this uh, C flag or carry bit to also indicate the status of a borrow digit or borrow bit. Okay, if there's a borrow of uh, one digit from uh, the, the left hand side and the, the hardware will also set this uh, bit in a specific way okay later on we will study uh, this property so as a programmer of a microcontroller or microprocessor system you must okay pay attention to these uh, four status of a computational result okay and the in software these four computational results are being translated into this condition. This will make your task or your job of doing programming much easier. Okay? So you just need to know all this condition is being supported by the hardware or by the status register. Okay? So as a programmer, then you just need to make use of the least condition. First condition is equal. That means uh, the two input value are equal. Okay, this one means uh, not equal. So equal, not equal. Then negative, positive, greater than or equal to uh, smaller. Okay, is less than than the smaller than. This is a greater than. But pay attention to okay to the difference between this one and this one. This one means uh, greater than. This one means uh, greater than or equal to. Okay, pay attention to the difference between this one and this one. This means uh, smaller than. This one means what? Uh, smaller than or equal to. Okay, so these are the condition for you to use. Okay, in combination with uh, operational call. Okay. So now we move on to study the four basic instruction which allow you to implement data processing with arithmetic operation. The first instruction is addition. When you undertake a data processing, addition is a basic one. Okay. So this instruction is encoded with a 32 bit. Okay, so from bit zero to bit 31. So you do not need to know like, the exact nature property of the encoding. So you just need to know, okay, inside this instruction, you must specify the destination. You must specify at least one operand additionally you can apply shift operator to the second operand, etc. And uh, here you can okay, set this bit to update the status register in order to produce a condition or, or computational result, okay? Uh, status, okay, the status of a computational result. Then the syntax, you will see you can undertake a conditional computation. So this computation or data processing will occur if this condition, okay, from 
the status of a computational result is met. Okay, if it's not met, then this data processing will not occur. Okay, but syntax here you must pay attention. Uh, this is a destination of the result. This indicate one input value. This indicate eventually the second input value. All right. Okay. So here we show you some example for you to familiarize with you uh, with uh, okay this uh, instruction of addition. For example, and this is a data processing of uh, uh, doing increment by one. That means we increase the value inside register Rx by one. Okay. Then for this instruction, basically first we increase the value inside Rx by doing multiplication by two because let's shift with the n bit is equivalent to times the value inside rx by two raised to the power n okay then once you get this one then you a this uh, new value to with uh, the initial value inside rx then the result will be written into RD. Okay. You can also undertake addition with address. This is the PC counter of a CPU. So inside here, you have an address of the actual instruction. Then this address will, okay, will be added to this offset. Then the result will be stored inside RD. And uh, this example show you the conditional computation or conditional data processing. Okay, EQ means in the previous computation, if the two inputs are equal, then you undertake this computation. Or if the result is equal to zero, then you undertake uh, this computation. That means let R0 equal to R1 plus R2. And the second addition is to do addition with uh, two number in addition of uh, carry bit or carry digit because when we undertake uh, addition with a uh, two number it may the, uh, the overflow may occur when overflow occur means what this addition will generate a carry of a one digit to the right hand side. Therefore, when you undertake additional addition, then you must consider this uh, carry digit, okay? And then in this case, you must call or use this uh, instruction, okay? To take into account the, the carry digit, okay? So next slide, we'll show you the example. Okay, about the scenario in which we must make use of uh, this instruction. Okay, so in terms of syntax, it's quite similar to ADD. The only difference is we change 1D to C, then we use ADC. Okay, S here is to uh, indicate the requirement of uh, updating uh, status register. Uh, CPSR is the current program status register. Okay. So here show you the scenario in which we must make use of ADC. For example, we are going to do the addition with the two 64-bit integer. So this is the first 64-bit integer. This is the second 64-bit integer. Since we do not have instruction for us to do 64-bit addition then we can only make use of uh, the combination of uh, these two instruction which are applicable to 32 bit number of value in order to achieve uh, this result of uh, computing 64 bit sum okay so in this case we first do addition with uh, the lower uh, 32-bit integer, R0, okay, which is stored inside R0, 
and uh, another lower 32 bit integer which is stored inside R2. Okay, we do the addition of these two 32 bit integer result is stored inside register 4. But in this case, overflow may occur. When overflow occur, then we have a carry digit one, okay? A carry of a one, okay? Then when we do this addition, that this addition must take into account this carry of a one. This is why you recall this instruction to do addition of R1 plus R3 plus carry bit, then result is stored inside R5. This is the way for us to achieve the computation of addition with the two 64 bit integer. All right, okay. So this is a scenario for you to make use of ADC. Then we may have another scenario of doing addition with a two 16 bit integer. Then in this case, you use SADD 16. S means uh, this is a signed addition. That means uh, the two input are signed integer. That means the integer could be negative, positive. Okay, all right. So in this case, you just uh, call this uh, uh, instruction. Then you can achieve the addition of a two signed 16 bit integer. Okay. So here I just show you uh, some uh, uh, example, okay? And uh, in this example, you may find out that we have another variation to this uh, low instruction and the store instruction. You see this letter hash. Hash means a half wall. Half wall means what? 16 bit integer, okay? So actually you can uh, okay, uh, use this just to load okay, 16 bit into okay, a register instead of a loading uh, 32 bit okay, uh, into, the, okay, into the register. For example, for this one, we just load two by instead of a four by, okay? And uh, this will store two byte, okay, into the memory location instead of uh, uh, four byte, okay. So, and for this instruction, by default, we row 32 bit is a four byte, okay. 32 bit correspond to four byte. Here is two byte because uh, it's half wall, 16 bit, all right, okay. So we load the first value into R3, load the second value into R5. Then we do this computation R3 plus R5. Result is a store back into R3, store back into R3. And uh, also we load four by into R3, but you see we intentionally just to undertake addition with the lower two, two by because it's 16 bit. Okay, we ignore the upper two by, we just do the addition with the lower two by. Okay, okay. then store the result from uh, R3 to the memory location uh, indicated by R2 with this offset of uh, four. Okay, skip four by. Okay, something like Okay, so that's about the addition. Then second basic operation is uh, subtraction. Okay, so we have this instruction S U B. So syntax is quite similar. You can undertake a conditional computation with a subtraction, and then you can explicitly tell the the programmer to update the status register in order to produce condition or status of a computational result. Okay, so. When you do the subtraction, then you may wonder how to take into account the digit of a borrow, because uh, when you do a subtraction, eventually you may borrow one digit from the left-hand side. Do we have a, a, a borrow bit 
okay, in the status register? The answer is no, we do not have. Then how to know this information about the Apollo of one? The answer is to share this carry bit, okay? When there's a borrow occurs, then we set the speed to be zero. When no borrow, okay, when there's no borrow, then set the speed to be one. So when we do in this way, actually immediately you understand the borrow bit is equal to C minus one. For example, when C equal to one, then one minus one equal to zero, then there's no borrow. So not. When C equal to zero, then the borrow bit is equal to zero minus one, then the borrow bit is equal to negative one. Okay, so this is a, a clever way for us to implement the borrow bit with the use of uh, carry bit. Okay, so later on we will show you an example about the, uh, the way how to use of uh, borrow bit. Okay. And uh, here, just show you example. Let's say we just do a decrement of the content in Ri by one. Then result store back to R1. Ri, not R1, Ri. Okay, I could be equal to zero, one, two, three, etc. Okay. So here is another example to do the decrement by one and write the result back to the same register. And uh, we indicate that uh, we need to update the status register. Okay, so we put the S here. Okay, and uh, there is a variation to the SUB, so we call it uh, as a R S B. This is a reverse uh, subtraction. Reverse subtraction means instead of doing R I minus one, we do in this case is R two minus R one and the right result to R0, so it's a reverse subtraction, okay? And uh, here, show you the example of uh, taking into account of uh, borrow digit. So you put the C here, means uh, must you do the subtraction with consideration of the carry bit. Then in this case, basically we must uh, okay, consider the borrow bit. The borrow bit is what? It's a C minus one, now you understand this way to implement the borrow bit. So you will see when there's a borrow, then this is zero, then zero minus one equal to minus one. Then this is a borrow bit. So we must detect this borrow bit from R2 channel, okay? So then this, this uh, figure illustrate the way of undertaking subtraction with consideration of uh, the digit of a borrow, okay? And uh, in case if we we are going to do the normal subtraction, okay, with the two number, how to consider the borrow bit? Because this one is uh, useful for you to undertake a reverse subtraction with consideration of a borrow bit, but for normal subtraction, you use this instruction. So SBC, we change, we change uh, UB to BC, then C indicate, okay, the consideration of a borrow bit, okay? And uh, here you, you, we show you the equation, borrow bit or borrow digit is equal to not carry digit is equal to C minus one, okay? Okay, so, so the syntax is similar to SUB. And here we show you example of uh, using SUB. So this is a normal order. That means uh, R1 minus R2 result, we are right back to R0. Then in this case, when you see the C here, immediately you understand you are going to do R1 minus R2 plus C minus one. Okay, so you follow this illustration. Why do we need to have uh, this uh, instruction? This instruction will enable us to compute 64 bit difference between two number. And uh, this is the scenario, okay? For example, we have a 64 bit value stored inside R0, R1, another 64 bit number, which is stored inside R2, R3. When we undertake a subtraction, 
Okay, first we do the subtraction between R0 and R2, and the list may generate a borrow digit here. Then for the second subtraction, we must call this SPC. And remember, we must put the S here to ask the hardware to update status register. All right. And uh, in a similar case to addition, if we just want to undertake uh, subtraction with a 16-bit integer, which could be negative or positive, then we just use S S U B 16. Okay, so so this is a uh, encoding for this uh, instruction. This is the syntax for you to use this in instruction. Okay. And uh, here, just show you example. Then in this case, also inside this register, you have uh, 32 bit. But this uh, computation will only consider the two uh, uh, lower byte. The two lower byte uh, is equal to uh, 16 bit. Okay. Then we do the subtraction. Result we put into uh, this register. Okay. And uh, this tail structure may be useful for you to uh, manipulate complex number. Usually complex number has a real part, imaginary part. So you have a real value, imaginary value. Then you can do some uh, computation uh, with a real value, which is a uh, 16 bit, for example, okay? And uh, this also is a 16 bit. It's because we use one uh, register to store one complex number then we must share uh, the four byte. So two byte for real value, two byte for the imaginary value, okay? Then when we do addition, usually addition means what? Uh, to A, the real value together, to A, imaginary value together. Then such uh, addition or subtraction will occur on beta with uh, 16 bit, all right? Okay, so this is this explanation. Okay, so previous slide show you the addition and the subtraction. Now we move on to study uh, the third arithmetic operation, which is a modification, MUL. Okay, so we can encode MUL instruction with a 32 bit, okay, code. And the inside here, you see we can, we can put in condition we can put in S to request for the update of the status. And uh, then we have a destination, we have the operand one, operand two, etc. Okay, so this is a syntax for you to use this instruction. Then this slide basically show you uh, one example, okay, about the result when you do modification. So you must pay attention to the overflow because when there's an overflow, we may lose one bit. When you lose a one bit, you may get the strange result, okay? So in this case, for the last one, there's an overflow. For example, we show you three examples here. First example, to, to do the multiplication between value in R0 and the value in R1. So two times four, I guess every one of you know the result. Uh, result is what? A drama, okay? Second example, to do multiplication between value in R4 and the value in R3. In R4, we have uh, 77. And uh, in R3, we have, uh, okay, it's a 77 hexadecimal number, okay? And then in R3 is FFFFF10 is also hexadecimal number. Result will write back to R5. This is also a simple calculation because this will not produce overflow. I guess you can use your calculator to come out with this answer. Okay, but the problem is here. When you do uh, multiplication between value in R6 and the value in R7, okay, then with overflow, actually you get this number. Okay. This, this is a decimal number. This decimal number correspond to this hexadecimal number. This is why you will see this hexadecimal number. So this is the wrong result, okay? This is because you can easily verify, okay? This one times this one 
with a decimal number because uh, R6 decimal number is this one, R7 decimal number is this one, this one times this one, you get this decimal number. You can verify with your calculator, okay? But this one, if you convert this in hexadecimal number, is this one. But the, we need to have a 33 uh, digit to store this number. But inside our microcontroller, we only have a 32 bit. That means what? We will lose this one. Once you cut off this one, you get this uh, hexadecimal number. And the least hexadecimal number correspond to this decimal number. This is why you will get this result, okay, when overflow occurs. Okay, this assumption is for you to pay attention, okay, when you do multiplication, all right? Then how to do enzyme in the uh, multiplication? So it means you have a multiplication and uh, with uh, two uh, positive number or unsigned number, okay? So then in this case, not only we must put this letter here, we also indicate we must use double word instead of a single word. The result we are stored inside the double word, okay? For the double word, then we have a, a lower word and the higher word. So 32 bit uh, register here to hold the lower word and the 32 bit register to hold the higher word because in total we have a two word for the result then the syntax will be like this okay so then okay here we do not show you example then you you basically it's quite straightforward like let's say you have r0 r1 r2 r3 then value in r2 times value in r3 then result will be converted into 64-bit integer. The first 32-bit we are stored here, and uh, the second 32-bit, the upper 32-bit we are stored here. That's it, okay? So it's quite uh, similar to the case here, okay? So then for multiplication, we have additional instruction which is called MLA. This is allow you to do multiplication with accumulation. That means multiply plus accumulate. This is why we call it multiply plus accumulate. Okay, so result is written back to another register. So therefore, you must have a three input, one, two, three, then one output. This is why you have a one, two, three as an input, one output. Okay, so the syntax is like this, okay? So it's R1 times R2 plus R3, result will be uh, stored into R0, okay? Syntax is like this, it's quite straightforward, okay? And uh, for division, so you, and the list instruction will be phased out the slowly, you read, okay, arm, um, Okay, this ARM instruction is optional, okay, for architecture uh, uh, 7, version 7, okay? So this is why we have a uh, very few examples. This is just for you to know, like, in case if you, you see something like that, so it means uh, in the older version, uh, okay, there's a version 5 or 3 or 1, okay? You, you, when you read the very old program, then you may encounter this instruction. So you know, like basically it's for you to do the division, okay? So it's not that difficult for you to understand the meaning of doing division, okay? Right? Then we have uh, two special case for doing multiplication and uh, division. For example, multiplication by multiple of two or division by multiple of uh, two. Then in this case, we use a shift operator, logic shift or arithmetic shift. When we shift left, it means what? Or shift left by one bit, it is equivalent to do multiplication by two. If you shift y bit, it's equivalent to do multiplication by two raised to the power y, okay? 
So for uh, right shift is the same. If you shift one bit, it's equivalent to do division by two. If you shift two bit, it's equivalent to do division by four. If you shift y bit, it's equivalent to do division by two raised to the power of y. Okay, but when you do uh, right shift with negative number, you will face a problem of uh, having the negative sign to be shift from bit 31 to bit 30. How to prevent this thing happens? Okay, then you must call this uh, instruction. This is arithmetic shift right. Arithmetic shift right means uh, don't shift the sign bit. Okay, the sign bit will remain unchanged. You only shift the data bit. All right, okay. On top of a shift right, we also have a rotate right. Rotate right means uh, let all the bit to undertake a clockwise rotation. That means the bit zero will reach bit, uh, become a bit 31, bit 31 become a bit 30, bit 30 become a bit 29, etc. So rotate, this is a logic rotation, okay? Then how's about the arithmetic rotation? Because we do not want the sign bit to be involved in the rotation, okay? Uh, no, okay, it's not, okay, for this case, is to involve uh, the carry bit inside the clockwise rotation. Then for this instruction is to consider, okay, the, the C flag as a bit 32. So then we have a total number of a bit of uh, 33. So with this 33 bit, we undertake a clockwise rotation, okay? So this means what? We have a single uh, carry bit, we shift, okay, 31 times, okay? The first shift, give you a reach position uh, one, because initial position is zero, okay? One shift, we are reach position one, second shift, reach position two. After 31 shift, he, the list bit will reach position 32. Then C bit will reach here. You do the all operation. So basically it means uh, you put this bit to be here. Like, okay, this is a mathematic uh, explanation. Okay, for the action of a putting carry bit at the position 32. Okay, it's a bit 32. And the total number of a bit is uh, 33 because we count the number of a bit from a zero all the way to 32, all right? And uh, another knowledge for you to know is we can embed the logic shift into a normal instruction. For example, for this instruction, okay, we have embedded the logic left shift into the instruction, okay? So this makes the computation more efficient, okay? So you understand the meaning of this one, okay? Left shift by one means what times two. That means the value in R1 times two, the result will be stored inside R0. Then here, left shift by two means what? Times two raised to the power two, which is equal to four. That means the value in R5 times four, result will be stored into R7, okay? And uh, here is an example I'll show you uh, how to make use of uh, logic shift left to write this uh, simple program. Uh, now you know, okay, what is the meaning of the area? It is uh, uh, this uh, directive to, is to allocate, uh, okay, a memory space for your program. And this is read only, this is the entry point of your program, okay? First is to load this value in hexadecimal format into register R0 and uh, then times this value by two because the left shift one bit is times two and the store the result into R1, then left shift R1 uh, by one bit. So it times the value of R1 by two and the store the result into R2. Okay, then stop, okay, something like that. And uh, this one more example, slightly complicated. 
and uh, he show you or he demonstrate to you the way to implement some uh, complicated uh, computation with uh, assembly language okay so this directive is to allocate space for the program tool okay in the memory segment call this is read only this is the entry point of your program then we store because this example is to compute factorial of n okay we store the value n so pay attention this is a decimal number okay and uh, this now we store the 10 okay so this could be any value okay basically do low n into r6 okay then we use r7 to hold the final result and uh, initialize r7 with this initial value one okay now we have uh, this loop so you just need to understand okay this uh, the, the sequence change the sequence of a change of a value in R7, then you understand the dynamics of this loop, okay? So initially, the value in R7, the one, then you start to enter the first loop. After the first loop, after the first loop, what will be the value in R7? Is uh, one times R6. R6 is equal to N, okay? So after the first loop, uh, R7 is equal to 1 times N. Then R6 become N minus 1, China, because you do the, uh, the decrement, the subtraction by 1. Okay? Then you enter the second loop. For the second loop, because R6 is equal to N minus 1, then result of R7 is uh, Initial value is one times n. Okay, that means this is the output from a loop one times uh, r six. R six is n minus one. Okay, this is after second loop. Then after second loop, r six is equal to what? R six is equal to n minus two because uh, n minus one minus one then become n minus two. Then when you enter third loop, okay, third loop, r seven is equal to the result. At the end of uh, second loop, this is a one times n times n minus one times the actual value of R6. The actual value of R6 is now here is uh, n minus two. So you get this. Then what is the final uh, result after the final loop? Final loop because the final value of R6 is one. Okay, so you get this one. Okay, all right. So this is a way for you to visualize the value change in register R7. Now, okay, we look at the basic operator for logic operation, okay? The first one is the N operator. It's a bitwise N. So you see the encoding format for N will use 32 bit. Inside, you know the first input, second input, and the result. And uh, you can also undertake a conditional computation because then this is a syntax, okay? You can put the condition here. You can tell the how well to update status register, etc. And uh, what is the bitwise uh, N operation? But this example shows you, if you have zero, zero, the output is zero. Zero, one is zero. One, zero is zero. Only you have a one, one, then you get a one. One, zero is zero. One, one, you get the one. Zero, 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 one, zero. Okay, so this is an uh, example. Okay, remind you about the bitwise N operator. Okay, then here show you a more useful example in, in real life programming. For example, uh, your application want to force specific bit inside a register to become a zero. Then this is a technique or skill for you to apply to achieve uh, this operation. You can force all the bit to be zero or force a specific bit to be zero. Then in this case, you need to produce a mask. So this is a mask. So mask, okay, this is a hexa by default is a hexadecimal number. And the easy way for you to understand 
uh, bit location is to write it into binary format. So this is a mask in the binary format. Okay, this is to tell you that I want to force the bit at the position five at the position nine to be zero. Okay, I want to force this bit to be zero. Then you will see how to apply this. Okay, how to implement this uh, this action. So this is the result. First. You define this mask, okay? Then you do the negation of this mask because I want to turn this speed to be zero, turn this speed to be zero, okay? Then I'm going to do n operation. When this, if this is the input, let me do n operation with this one. Then this speed will be zero, become zero. This speed will become zero. Then result is this one R two. This speed becomes zero, becomes zero, okay? If the uh, data or register uh, in question, okay, is this one, because we want to force uh, this two bit to be zero. Then you do n operation, that means this one and this one, then you will see this bit will be forced to be zero, this bit will be forced to be zero, then result is here, okay, zero, zero. Then you will see inside the R2, we will have a zero, 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 one. R2 is zero, 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 one. Inside R4, we have uh, this is a A, this is a A, then this is a C, this is a D. So you have a, a A C D. Okay, okay. So this show you the intermediate result. Okay, when you apply this uh, this small program to undertake uh, this action. Okay. The second logic operator is all. Okay, so this is very much similar to the end operator okay so this is a encoding for this instruction then this is a syntax for you to use and then you know you can undertake a conditional operation okay and uh, this just remind you the the result of undertaking all operation if you have a zero zero then you get zero as long as you have a one then you get a one if you have at least one then you get a one at least one you get a one at least one you get a one at least one, you get one, both zero and get a zero. At the least, I have one, then we get the one. Okay? Um, then what is the usage of this instruction, logic operator? This operator allows you to force bit to be one. Of course, you can force uh, all the bit in the data to be one or force specific bit in the data to be one. Okay? For example, we have an A, data A as an input. And then we want to force it to be okay. There's a this bit to be one. Then you just uh, okay uh, indicate that means uh, okay write the one. Okay, then this will be forced to be one. Or you write this to be one. Then this bit will be forced to be one. Okay, and uh, here is an example. Then in this case you define a mask. So this is a mask. So mask in this case means what? I want to force a bit at the location five, location nine to be one. Okay, now you know that this is a bit at the location five. Now this is a, a position zero, position one, position two, position four, position five, position six, position seven, position eight, position nine. Okay, to force a bit at the position five and the nine to be one. If the input is this one, then this bit will be forced to be one, then you get this one. This bit will be forced to be one, then you get this one, okay? If this is the input data, then this bit will be forced to be one, then this bit will be forced to be one, then you get a one, one. Then what is the result of this one? So this is a zero, one, one, one. So then R2 will be equal to zero, one, one, one. What is this guy? This is a, a B, and the D, D. So you get the A, B, D, D. Okay, all right, so this is the instruction. So this show you the intermediate result when you do the instruction, okay? Okay, here you see move W means uh, move a 16-bit integer, single wall, uh, half wall, uh, is a half wall, okay? 16-bit uh, integer into the lower part of R0, okay? So this is why I treat this as a 16-bit integer, all right? You have another one, move T. Move T means move a 16-bit integer to the upper part of uh, this register, okay? 
then you do all operation, all operation, then you achieve this result, all right, okay? Then exclusive all, okay? Exclusive all basically is very useful for you to implement bitwise negation, okay? Later on, we'll show you, okay? So then this is a encoding for this instruction. This is a syntax. You can undertake a conditional computation, okay? And uh, this is a choose table. Choose table basically tell you Okay, as long as the input two bit are different, output is one. So input two bit are different, then output is one. Otherwise, if the two input bit are the same, result is zero. Result is zero if both of them are the same. Okay, so this is uh, this logic operation. Then is it useful to have uh, this operator? The answer is yes. Okay, you can fit specific bit inside a register or you can flip all the bit inside a data if you flip all the bit inside a data basically you give answer to this question okay to implement bitwise regression okay okay so now i show you example just to flip two bit okay so you define this mask if you want to flip all the bit, then you put the all the one here, like you say one 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 one. Then you will flip all the bit. Then result will be the negation of the input data. All right. And the, here we show you the flexibility for you to flip spec specific bit. Okay, there's a bit at the location five, location nine. Okay. If you apply to this input data. Then this will become a zero, then this will become one. If you apply to this data, then this will become one, this will become zero. Okay, then I'll put this one, you see zero, one become a zero, zero become a one, zero become a one, one become a zero. Okay, you just flip the bit, okay? Then this is equal to what? Zero, one, zero, one. So you get the zero, one, zero, one in hexadecimal value this is binary number binary number in hexadecimal number is this is a 10 or oh, this is a because 10 value 10 then it's a value 10 is a value 11 then it's a b value 11 uh no this is not value 11 this is a value uh, 13 okay so then value 13 you get the dd okay so it's a a d d Okay, so this is a, a hexadecimal value in R4, all right? And uh, then how to, okay, first, because this, uh, this is very uh, useful for the hardware operation. Later on when you study the second part of this course, you will encounter uh, many, many such needs to flip a bit, okay, into, okay, okay at the specific location, okay? So this is the one very useful operation. Another useful operation is, uh, is this one, okay? I want to clear uh, a flag in the status register, okay? So basically, when we say I want to clear a flag in the status register, this is correspond to this statement to write uh, to clear a bit in the data register or in the status register, okay? So then you may uh, see this sentence, to write one in order to clear a bit, okay? When you see this statement, immediately you understand, inside this instruction, actually, he's doing something similar like this one, okay? Doing something similar, okay? So it's just for you to understand, okay? How come uh, write one to obtain zero? Because some students okay, get confused to write one to get the, a zero. So now you understand to write one inside the mask to get a zero inside the data. Okay, now you understand the statement. Okay, otherwise uh, we cannot say to write the one inside the data in order to get the one from the data. It does not make sense, Jana. okay? Now you understand, because this operation implicitly make use of the mask 
is doing this kinds of operation. Okay, now you understand to write the one in a specific location of a mask in order to obtain zero at the same location of the data. All right, okay. For example, we write the one here. This is a mask, uh, one, 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 one. Then we obtain zero at the least location in the data. Then for the data, we get a zero. Then this is zero, this is zero. Then your output is this one, okay? This, okay, this becomes zero. And the, because you see a one here, then this becomes zero. You see, then this becomes a zero, okay? Then this is the output, okay? okay? So then, and uh, when you write the instruction, then you do it in this way, okay? So you must supply a mask. Then this is your data. If you call this instruction, then R0 will be the result like this, okay? So first, just to compute the negation of a mask, okay? Because when you write the mask here, you should be, your mask should be the, okay, it's like this. This is the mask, okay, it's R2. When we compute the negation, then this becomes zero. Then you do the M, then zero and this one becomes zero. Zero and this one becomes zero. So you can use this example to verify this computation. Then you will get this result, right? Okay, so, okay. So now we know the basic uh, instruction for us to use to undertake uh, arithmetic operation and uh, logic operation. Now we look at the scenario uh, to undertake a computational uh, uh, control, okay, or conditional computation, okay, to control the computational condition in order to achieve uh, conditional computation, okay. The first thing we need to do is to produce status of a computational result. So we can use this instruction, compare two value or two input number, whether they are equal, whether one is greater than another one, or one is smaller than another one, in order to produce the status of a computational result. Then we use that status to undertake a conditional computation. Okay, so you understand the, the, the principle. For example, this is a, a conditional computation. If this condition is true, then we do this, otherwise we do this. Then First, we need to obtain this condition. Then we can make a decision, okay? Then we can jump here or jump here, all right? Okay, so this is an instruction for you, to you, for you to use CMP to produce status of a computational result. Second one is another instruction. We also allow you to produce status of computational result. This instruction is interpreted as a test equality. So we have two input, we just do a test about the equality of these two numbers. So they can be equal, or they can be greater, or they can be smaller than or something like that, okay? So the purpose is to produce a condition, all right? Okay. But uh, when you, you call this one, this one will not trigger the update of the C flag. For example, for your computation, we need to preserve C flag because C flag has the information about the uh, carry digit or bolo digit. Okay, if we do not want to modify this value of this information, then you must use this one. Okay, PQ. And the in that in addition, we have a two extra instruction for us to produce a status of a computational result. Another one is CMN. M means uh, to get negated, okay, uh, status of a CMP. For example, for this one, we have three conditions, equal, greater than, smaller than. Then for this one, we are giving you not equal, not greater than, not smaller than, okay? So this will give you this three condition, okay? Then we have this TST. So TST is for you to do the bit, Wise n uh, operation, okay? So b wise n and uh, okay? But the TQ basically is for you to do bitwise exclusive all, okay? So you have uh, these four 
instruction to choose in order to produce condition. Okay. Then what kinds of condition do you need? That depends on your application. Okay. So the, the Cortex M4 or microcontroller just offer you these four instruction to produce, okay, your intended condition. All right. Okay. Once we have the condition, then we can control the computational flow based on the condition. Okay. First one is to directly jump to somewhere and uh, we do uh, without the return. That means no need to return back. Okay. It's this scenario. We have this flow of uh, computation. Then we jump here and follow this flow of computation. We never come back. But for many applications, we may want to come back. It's like uh, this is a function call. It's a function to compute cosine, sine, etc. Then we must return back to the same location here. Then we continue the same flow of computation. Then in this case, we must use BL. All right. The syntax is very simple. Okay. So you just go to a specific address. Okay. With L, then you will return back. L means what basically means link, link register. Okay. So you, you remember inside the okay, all the R register, one of the, one of them uh, is for you for us to we call it as a link okay program register okay is uh, is for us to store okay at the address at this point so that uh, we allow the function to return back to the main floor of the computation okay here you see condition means what well, we can undertake uh, this uh, action based on the condition of a uh, computation by previous instruction all right. Okay. So here, I just show you example. Okay. So directly jump to this memory. Okay. Label. So basically, it's the address. Okay. Without the returning, this is a conditional. Okay. A jump. Go to this. Okay. Address. If the carry bit has been set, it means what? If may is a carry of one or carry of one digit. Okay. This is a condition EQ means uh, uh, in the previous computation, the two input are equal. Then we jump to this, uh, okay, address without the returning, okay, back to the main uh, flow of the computation. If you call this instruction, basically means what we jump to this function. After execution, we will return back to this position, okay, to the next instruction, okay? so. Why can we return back? Because uh, this address has been memorized by the link register. Then link register contain your copy over to PC register. The when PC register increment by one, then next instruction to be performed will be the next one here. All right, okay. Okay, so good. So let's all about the, okay, the study of the first part of this course. So the Study of the first part of this course is for you to learn how to do programming. Okay, this will prepare you to study the second part of this course, which is about how to do interfacing with the input and output device. Okay, in the first part of this course, we have spent one session to appreciate the hardware aspect of a microcontroller. And that we have spent one session to understand the nature and the property of the memory, because the memory is the hardware support of programming. Then in lecture three, we have studied the philosophy, concept, and the principle behind programming. So basically, the two pillars behind programming is to plan computation and uh, to allocate memory, okay? So you should not be afraid of uh, doing programming. So lecture three is quite important, which allow you to remove the, the inner feel about the doing programming, okay? Then in lecture and uh, four, five, and uh, six, so basically, we, we study the detail 
of uh, how to entertain, okay? Uh, programming with uh, microcontroller Cortex M4. So I thank you for your effort and the attention spent on the study of the first part of this course. And uh, I wish that you will continue to enjoy the study of this course uh, with the second part, which will be taught by Prof. John Han.